Hello. Thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you for joining. Today we are chit-chatting about books again. Welcome. We are talking all about books and today this is the cover of the book that I will be talking about. Have you guys heard of it? Here we go. I'm going to turn this around so that you guys could see me. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <gasps> you have not heard of it, Debbie? This is a good book. This is such a good book. Such a good book. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. My name is Celie Recio, and I am the Chief Executive Mommy at themommyhood.com. I am also an organizer for momsrising.org, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about one of my obsessions, which are books. Um, you haven't heard of this book. This book is, um, Jocelyn Jackson has had, has many, many books. And, uh, this was her first. I remember reading it back in, I think it was in 2005. And it's just, you know, it captures you right from the beginning. So I'm going to read, read to you guys really what it's about. It's really about this woman who makes a promise. She makes a deal, actually. She makes a deal with God that she's not going to go back to her hometown. But you have to kind of read between the lines as to why that is. So this is the reason why um, it's such a great book because it just kind of pulls you right in. And I'm going to um, read for you guys just, just, just a little snippet so that you guys know what you're getting into here. Um, and this is the beginning. You know a good book. I always say that first page, you know, you know if, if it's going to be for you. Um, there are gods in Alabama, Jack Daniels, high school quarterbacks, trucks, big tits, and also Jesus. I left one back there myself, back in Posset. I kicked it under the kudzu and left it to the roaches. So she goes into this whole idea about she left her hometown. She was pretty much raised, um, her name is Arlene. Um, the main character's name is Arlene, and she leaves Alabama as soon as she can, right after her senior year. Something has happened. And she talks about it pretty, you know, upfront at the beginning, but she makes a promise. Something happens and she leaves. She says she's not going to go back ever again. Her mom uh, was pretty much out of it during her childhood. Her aunt ended up raising her, her aunt Florence, and she was a devout Baptist and, you know, just was very strict. So it com there comes a point where she has to make a decision to go back because someone that she knew in school visits her. Now she is living in Chicago. She is dating a black man. She is probably going to be marrying a black man. And so there are all these different uh, things, different topics that come up because she's having to deal with not going back to Alabama. It doesn't have anything to do with him. He of course thinks it does. He thinks that she doesn't want to tell her, her family that she's in love with a black man, but that's not the case. And it's not the case because um, something happened to her many years back. So she talks about what, you know, what it is and she's she's really looking at it and under it she's looking at the at the first chapter she's talking about what she's gone through this this girl has come to her doorstep and she wants to find um her high school sweetheart and it happens to be this boy that uh she thinks well that she knows she killed. Um, so she says, I've personally committed only one murder, but the truth is, it's not that simple. You can't tell whether you're the good guy or the bad guy based on whether you laugh or throw up. The truth is, I did both. So she goes in and she talks about it and she says, I was still shaking. I wanted to pray, but I was too angry with God to concentrate. 10 years. I had been faithful for 10 years and now God was breaking the deal. Before I left Posset, I had promised God I would stop fucking every boy who crossed my path. Although when actively involved in prayer, I used the word fornicating as if it would spare God's delicate ears. Now I was losing Burr over it. Uh, Burr was, is her, uh, her boyfriend. The truth was I had worried that I was losing him for months, but still I had stayed faithful. I had promised God I would never tell another lie. And I hadn't. Even when lying would make everything easy with Aunt Florence and my family, I had never let a word of untruth cross my lips. Lastly, I had promised that if he would get me out safe. I would never go back to Posset, Alabama. Not for anything. I wouldn't ever look back, lest I turn to salt. And now, God had allowed Posset, Alabama to show up on my doorstep. As far as I was concerned, 
all bets were off. So her promise was that if she was able to get out safely and that if, if God did not let the body be found, she would do these three things. And she's kept up her end of the deal. And now here we are 10 years later. And, you know, like she said, pasta comes to her doorstep. She knows that she has to go back to Alabama because she's going to lose her fiance. He is really adamant about meeting her family. He obviously thinks that it has to do with his race because she's from Alabama and her family, you know, according to her and according to what what you read is kind of unapologetically racist. And so going through all of that, you know, and you think you pick up the book and you think this is about what happened. This is about this murder that took place, but it's not, it's about family. Um, it's about coming together and it's about how love shows up. And I know it sounds crazy. I don't want to give you guys all the juice, but the book is so good. And it's, it just talks about, you know, it, it comes back to family. It comes back to what she's gone through because she had a very tough childhood and really when presented with this situation and with this fact, you know, having to go in to the book to find out what happened with, with this boy, what, ha what, you know, took place, how did it lead to her killing him? And then what were the details of that murder and how did she end up getting away with it? Uh, you know, and then within there you weave in, she goes back home, she takes her fiance and she has to deal with her family on, on two different spectrums, right? She's dealing with her family because she's never returned in those 10 years and having to explain that and having to, you know, the, the dance that you do with your family members when you might not have been around for so long and why that was. And so a lot of things come out from the family. A lot of secrets come out uh, with the family. And it's just, I mean, again, it's, it's hard. You know, you think, well, someone died. So how could this be a beautiful book? But it's a beautiful book about relationships. And Joshua does such a good job in really developing the characters and, and developing Arlene and showing you what she's been through on Florence, who, you know, it's like the, the aunt that we love to hate. Uh, just that character is so full of life and so powerful and has shaped so much of who Arlene has become, you know, good or bad, depending on how you look at it. And it's just one of those books that you can't stop reading and you won't. And you will, I think that you will be surprised by the ending. I know I was when I read the book um, so many years ago. It's one of those books, again, I read this book 11 years ago, I think, and it still sticks with me. It still kind of, you know, makes me grin when I think about all of the different pieces and how Jocelyn put together this really beautiful puzzle for us to kind of make our way through. Um, she's written uh, a few more books since then, her latest book, I can't remember the name of it, just came out in February, but after this, she wrote uh, another book called Between Georgia, which is also outstanding. Um, Someone Else's Love Story, uh, The Girl Who Stopped Swimming. I mean, just she's she is a beautiful and masterful storyteller, and she uses what she knows. Um, she uses this, this Southern flair to all of her stories that just bring the characters to life. You can identify with them even if you're not from the South. You can identify with them even if you're not um, a Southern Belle. Uh, so she's just really good. Hello, Lucretia, how are you? She is just so good at that storytelling. But really, I think that first, you know, that first read, right? That first read about um, There Are Gods in Alabama kind of pulls you in. And she's not shy about telling you that she's left Alabama because she's killed someone because she's killed this boy in high school in her senior year and she's made this promise to God that she won't lie that she won't fornicate and that she won't um what is it? and then she won't return back to her hometown so long as God hides the body and really when she goes back to Alabama to introduce her fiance her black fiance that to this family that is you know known to be racist um, we find out about so much about her life, about what she had right, what she had wrong, uh, just how she came to be and just developed that story outside of what we perceive and what we know, what she's already told us about the murder. Um, and then it, you know, obviously she goes into what happened there and all the specifics on there. I am not going to tell you about it because I feel like if you guys still want to pick up the book, I don't want to ruin it for you. But 
it's just one of those stories that sticks with you. Like I said, I think I've been thinking about um, Arlene for 11 years and those are the best books, right? The ones that stick with you, the ones that uh, you think about that, you know, kind of make you smile as you look through your, your list of books or look through um, your book collection. So definitely um, recommend it if you guys haven't had a chance to read it. Gods in Alabama, it's, it's a really great read and um, it'll stick with you. And it's not the story you think. It's not, you know, I think I went into it thinking one thing and it totally changed when I read it, I've just had a very different frame of mind about the book. Uh, you know, it's not so much about the murder, but about what created, um, what created her life, what created her personality and the people around her. And it really is about love. You know, it's hard, it's hard to explain, but it really is about love and the power of love at the end of the day. So pick it up, read it. You will not be disappointed. Gods in Alabama by Jocelyn Jackson. And again, if you guys um, see any of her books, I, I have not read a book by her that has that I have not loved. So that is what I have for you guys today. I am off to get lunch because I am uh, on my lunch break, but I wanted to share that book with you. I hope that you guys have a great time today, a great day, that if you are reading a book, I would love to hear about it. Um, head on over to Twitter and tell me what book you're reading. I am at my mommyhood on all my social media channels. If you have a book that you'd like me to review, let me know. Uh, I probably have it in this house. If I don't, um, I'll read it because I'm always looking for good book recommendations as well. So shoot me a tweet. Let me know what you're reading. Let me know uh, what you think I would like. And let me know if you've read Gods in Alabama. Let me know if you have... Um, if you haven't and you want to. So I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week if I don't see you um, later on this week. Uh, my name is Celie Riccio and I am the organizational strategist at themommyhood.com. I am also an organizer at momsrising.org and I am an avid reader. I look forward to seeing you guys later. Thanks. <music>